Hi, it's Kurt and Daniel from Clifton Accountants, and today we're going to talk to you about land tax. Daniel. Okay. Uh, land tax is a state-based tax, and it's based on the value of land that you're holding in your name or in a, in a different structure, Kurt. Yeah, so um, being a state-based tax, it means that uh, if you hold land in New South Wales and you pay land tax on that, um, that land based on New South Wales rates, if you hold land in a different state, obviously that's where you pay your land tax and, and it's based on the rules of those different states. Correct. Now, in New South Wales, Daniel, the threshold is 482000 It is. Which means that if, if you have land value of up to 482000 um, then, then you, you're, you're sweet. Anything under that, there's no payroll tax at, at all. But once you get over that, you start to pay. pay uh, That's right. Tax. And instead of tax of 1.6% over that threshold, um, the key thing to note is that different states have different rules. Um, some states don't even have land tax, uh, so you just need to be mindful of that. Um, and depending on the structure, uh, there's different rules associated with the thresholds too. So, so tell us, Daniel, because I have people come and ask me whether they should hold hold their land in, in a trust or in a company or individual. What, what's the different rules as far as thresholds for, sure. for different entities? Yes, so you, you get the threshold when you hold land in your own personal name, in a company, a super fund and even a fixed trust. Uh, we've come across circumstances where we've seen land held in a discretionary or a family trust. Uh, no threshold applies to land held in, in that type of ent entity. Um, so basically you're paying land tax from the first dollar um, so we've had a number of cases where we've had new clients that have had the hill land and when the first thing we've done is try to get them out of that structure and transfer it into, a, into better structures so they can avoid land tax. It, it's also important to know that land tax is not payable. Some people might hear this and get a bit concerned about their, their family home. Land tax is not payable on your family home and it's also not payable on, on farmland. So uh, it, it's all other land that's, that's grouped together to work out whether you're over the land tax threshold and, and one other thing on that, it, it only includes the unimproved value of the land, not any building. So if you have a rental property worth 600000 yep. the land might only be worth 300000 of that, so, so you're still under the, the threshold. Yeah, and the, and the value actually is assessed by the value in general. Uh, it's not something you individually assess yourself and work out the market value of that land. So I often have clients come and say to me, uh, they've got a trading company, so they're, they're running a business through their company. Yeah. Um, they've all, already got investments in their personal name, so they want to invest or buy a property in their trading company. Is, is that a good idea? Tell us why or um, why not. Sure, you get the threshold for land tax purposes, which is, which is fantastic. Um, but there's other considerations that need to take into, need to, to take into consideration. Uh, the, the, the first one relates to capital gains tax. With a company, you don't get the 50% discount, uh, so therefore you, you, need to be, you need to be aware of that. So when, when you sell the property, you're not going to get that discount. The other thing is, is when you've got a trading company, you, you, there are some asset protection issues there as well, in that you've, you've, you're putting your, your property at risk with the, the, the trading or, or, or your business. Yeah, one of, one of the main reasons we set up companies for clients is for asset protection. So if you're putting uh, an asset like an investment property in that company, then, then you, you're kind of yeah, getting rid of one of the values, of, you know, one of the main selling points of a company. Um, the other thing that some people, um, I, I guess, would be concerned about and may want to know is, if I'm buying a property, am I liable for any unpaid land tax from the previous owner if, if they had to be registered for land tax? Uh, there is a risk there. Um, what I'd probably suggest to you is you, you get some legal advice on that because um, there could be some considerations when you when it comes to buying property. Generally land tax um, is, well actually in New South Wales in particular, land tax actually is assessed at the end of December, 31st of December. So if you hold the property at 31st of December, you're liable for land tax for the full year. Um, so it's, it's something to be uh, considered when, when purchasing property. And if you if you get a land tax clearance certificate, which most solicitors will do for you on a on a property um, transfer, that will ensure that you're not liable for the land tax on or that the previous owner owner had. So, look, thanks for um, being with us today. If you want more information, feel free to, to see us, um, call the office, or see our uh, website at cliftonaccountants.com.au. Thank you. Thanks.